A very happy day to all of you and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your learning partner Sushila Hariharan. Today is an epic day because on 31st December 2021, right up to 31st December 2022, we are going to transit the most important financial term of the financial index that has ever been used for over three decades, that is the LIBOR, to alternative reference rates. In this video, we're going to take a look at what was LIBOR, how did it work, how did it get prominence, especially in the OTC derivative markets. We'll also take a look at what is the new benchmark and how banks and financial institutions are going to use the new benchmark. LIBOR stands for London Interbank Offer Rate. London Interbank Offer Rate is the interest rate at which one bank lends to another bank across maturities in different currencies. As the term itself suggests, this interest rate is determined in London. It is between two banks. It is a rate at one rate at which one bank will lend to another bank on an unsecured basis. Hence the term LIBOR. LIBOR is an index of interest rates of five major currencies. These include USD, JPY, Euro and others. So what do we mean by an index? Those of us who are familiar with Nifty 50 of the National Stock Exchange or Sensex of the BSE know that an index is a benchmark. And global mutual fund managers use these benchmarks for highlighting their performance. Similarly, while those two, that is Nifty 50 and Sensex, is used for uh, the equity markets, LIBOR is used as an interest rate reference. It's determined for almost two and a half decades, right up till 2012, by the BBA that is the British Banking Association. The British Bankers Association used to call up about 8 to 12 banks every day morning and ask them what was their interest rate for different currencies across maturities were they to lend to different banks. So now in interbank the spread is almost zero because both banks are part of the same clearing and payment system. So when one bank lends to another bank, normally the spread will not exist. Therefore, all these kind of unsecured loans were considered by BBA for aggregating the interest rates. What was LIBOR used for? LIBOR was generally used by corporates and banks to price their floating rate loans or floating rate bonds some companies might want to issue medium term uh, notes on a floating rate basis. Uh, there are institutional investors like pension funds, mutual funds who are big players in the derivative market. So they have outstanding positions in interest rate swaps. Then how do they mark to market the value of the outstanding position? LIBOR was used as a benchmark. How do we come to know about LIBOR? LIBOR was, is disclosed every day on media aggregators like Bloomberg and Thomson Reuters. But following the uh, global financial crisis of 2008, LIBOR administered by BBA was rigged by major banks. So large banks across the world, because they had taken a bad hit during 2007-2008 financial crisis, were showing very reduced profits and they wanted to turn the curve they wanted to append the curve and show those reduced profits into higher profits. So what they did was they started valuing all their outstanding contracts at lower LIBOR. This led to higher valuations because of marking to market. Marking to market also called as MTM is a step that is mandatory by all banks wherein they value all outstanding market-driven instruments on a daily basis. We will be doing a, a module on how 
MTM operates in different markets. Since the benchmark LIBOR was rigged lower and the valuation was at higher levels, this resulted into great profits by the banks. So the banks that were showing losses in 2007 and 2008 turned the corner, turned the tide and started showing phenomenal profits. This led to a greater scrutiny by the regulators of the UK capital markets and when they scrutinized the valuation methods adopted by the bank, they found that major banks had rigged the LIBOR. Because of this rigging, banks created higher profits which were not real, which were artificial profits. They were penalized, they were fined heavily, but in the process, BBA also lost its position to administer the LIBOR. Now, from 2013 till 2021, we have the ICE LIBOR, that is the Intercontinental Exchange, which is the administrator of the LIBOR. What does ICE do? ICE decided to create a larger pool of participating banks. So what happens when there is a larger pool of between 11 to 18 participating banks, then since the depth of data that comes from each of the banks is very high and the breadth of participation is very wide, the ability to fudge or to rig the rate is impossible. So hence, LIBOR ICE, which was in vogue, which was in use by banks from 2013 till 2021 and in fact even till 2022 across these five major currencies was in place. But by end of 2022, ICE LIBOR will be completely phased out. So what they have done is today is the last day, 31st December 2021, across dollar, they will no longer declare the dollar overnight LIBOR. Okay. So now how will banks benchmark their outstanding position? How will MTM be done? How will floating rate bonds be issued? We now have a new system called as ARR, also called as the alternative reference rate. The alternative reference rate is to be determined by each bank in their own country. So what RBI has done is, it has mandated all the banks to put in place a methodology to find out the depth of the market trades that have taken place in fixed income products and thereafter create their own alternative reference rate. This reference rate in global currencies, in the case of USD, is called as SOFR, that is Secured Overnight Financing Rate. It is called as SONIA. If the loan is in, if the bonds are issued in GBP, SONIA is standing for secured, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, sterling overnight index aggregate. Sterling is a term that is generally used for GBP in common market parlance. In Indian banks are going to use ARR, also called as the alternative reference rate. The ARR will be used by banks to value on a daily basis the MTM outstanding positions of the interest rate swaps, currency swaps, foreign currency convertible bonds and foreign currency bonds. The ARR will also result into the complete elimination of MIBOR which used to exist uh, till about 2021 that is the Mumbai Interbank offer rate, which was used by many banks as a reference rate. So tomorrow, if you're going to take, from 2022, if you're going to take a floating rate mortgage or you're going to take a floating rate loan from a uh, on behalf of a company, the usage will no longer be MIBOR, but it will be ARR. If you have any queries, please post in the comments box. Uh, it is on the basis of what comments I get on my LinkedIn profile as well as on my YouTube channel, I make videos. If there are any topics you would like me to cover, please let me know. Your feedback is very important to my content team because they spend a lot of time in creating content by searching up a variety of directories and databases for which we have subscriptions so that we give you pure authentic data. Thank you so much for watch watching this channel and we wish you the very best in 2022.